All right. Are we live? Yeah. Yeah, we're live. We're live. We're live. So, um, Brandon and Mitch, I'm Pat. And Hi. And welcome to the Thursday live stream. Hi. So, we have one of our sponsors here in, stu- in person in, in the studio. studio. So, we want to start off by talking business, right? So, Mitch, tell everybody a little bit about Arms Preservation, Inc. and what you guys do. Arms Preservation, Inc., anti-corrosion barrier packaging for all of your firearms, any of your accessories, your ammo, anything metal. Put a clean item in the bag, pull it out whenever, two years, three years, four years, once a month, twice a month, you're going to have a corrosion-free weapon available to you. Your ammo is going to be kept safe, not corroded. We all know what happens to ammo when we leave them in moist environments. Sure. Moist environments. You will see corrosion. Our product helps keep them from corroding. It's um, awesome. Fully reusable. Mm-hmm. Put a product in and out of it a couple times a month, and it's still going to last up to five years because of our technology and the way that we designed it. The way that Jason designed it, as a matter of fact. Vapor corrosion inhibitor, right? The that is DCI correct. The DCI technology. Vapor so. corrosion inhibitor. Yeah. And they're, they're super tough, too. I mean, they're not just a little thin... You know, where you put something in, it's going to rip, you know. Like We've seen those bags, you, right, with yeah. the, the, uh, certain manufacturers will put, like, a one-time use, like a disposable-type yeah. bag mm-hmm. in with a gun, and it's blue. It looks pretty good, right? But it's very cheap material. So, so the material inner material different. of our bag is made of that, and the way how ours works and lasts so much longer is because we put an exterior barrier layer, which ah. keeps that VCI molecule inside. Nice. We also use a little bit of a thicker mill on the interior right? Uh, to make sure that it gets some longevity. But absolutely, same type of idea, but that's how we keep that VCI product inside. It creates a micro-environment right. every time you put your gun the in The Velcro's there. great, too. Velcro's Very great. durable. Yeah. Very like, durable. You can Super use that hundreds, if not probably thousands of times. You should try so. opening all those right after we package them, after they've been on the press. <laughs> oh, man. They're, yeah, they're it's difficult to... Yeah. We've got our little tool. But listen, that's what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be able to shake your gun mm-hmm. and not have it bounce through that Velcro. I believe it. So, yeah. Oh, it'll yeah. it'll definitely hold. Like, I'm you sure put, you put an ammo can worth of ammo, yeah. shake it, it's not going to come out. Yeah, you don't, you yeah. don't want it to tear open. Now, those yeah. have the Ziploc. On top, oh, and they're gusseted true. in the bottom that's true. to fit your ammo can, whether it be 30 cal or yeah. 50 cal. Yep. It's set up for that purpose. Yes, yeah, so you've got the ammo can liner, you've got the pistol bag, you've got the shotgun bag, mm-hmm. you've got the tactical bag, and then you've also got a shorter version of the tactical bag that's, that's more for like a military type of application. Correct. That's actually the one the military has contracted us and right. utilized and bought from us, uh, which is the, the M4 bag. It's meant for your shorter barrels, but it'll still fit your 16-inch with a comp on there or a 13.7 with a comp. Right. Matter of fact, we had one with a suppressor on there. That's it's just cool. an example, and there was just enough room in there for that thing to fit. So Very cool. And these are obviously something that are like made overseas and brought of course. in. You bring of course. Yeah, you? <laughs> no, every single part of our bag is made and sourced in the USA, from the Velcro cool. to the barrier packaging itself, okay. and even the construction done right in Fairport, New York. You're buying U.S. from U.S. people. Is it, uh, I don't know if it's something you can get. I know like with clothing, there's like berry compliant. Is that right. something that you're pursuing? Or like, because that matters to me. Like if I see something that's berry compliant, because I think that means it's it's just a paper trail where you can prove that everything is sourced, you know. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. I, I think that's, that's awesome. You guys are working on. Or, I have not know, looked or, into that. Jason might have already looked into that, but yeah. I myself have not. You might have had to for like the if the if like for certain government contracts, contracts or whatever. And yeah, like that. might be yeah. something you did already. Yeah. Jason's the but, mad scientist behind it. I'm just the uh, I'm just yeah. The where's bad he? Bucks. He's cool. Yeah. Where's he? He's cool. Oh yeah, he's, he's cool. He's not here tonight. <laughs> that's okay. Well, <laughs> we're happy you were able yeah, to be here. We're super happy. Uh, we only have room for three people. Yeah, there, we yeah, couldn't really fit to. everybody back here it's together anyways. Guy, That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we just make it it's tighter, statue. right? Um, so we have one more sponsor to cover, and then we'll talk about why we're all wearing these goofy outfits. So um, Beyond Driven Performance and Fitness in Leroy, New York, um, right there on Main Street, 24-7 access. Uh, they have your spin fit classes. They have your boxing classes. They have your CrossFit classes. They have, you know, so many different uh, programs available. Personal training. Are you going to uh, get funny looks if you showed up in, like, tactical gear? 
You know what? They have a pretty cool clientele and a pretty cool environment over there. I have worn a plate carrier in the weight room there before, yeah. and it wasn't a problem for me. Um, they do a Memorial Murph Challenge every Memorial Day. That's true. Actually, cool. so they, you know, it's known that they're supportive yeah. of our community, right? Yeah, super um, cool. Yeah. So, no, I would say that Can if you, you go, go over, over the, the Murph real quick for those people that don't know. What, oh, yeah, like if you're not real, familiar with like, the Memorial. That's like a daily workout you do, right? I, that's just like. <laughs> I avoid that thing that. like the plague. <laughs> no, um, so it's a mile run. Uh, so, first of all, generally, it's accepted to do it in kit. Um, I, in my opinion, if you're not doing the Murph in your gear, you're in. if you don't have gear, you're not doing a Murph, right? Because you have to put that shit on. Sure. Um, so, it's a mile run. And then you have to do 100 pull-ups and 200 push-ups and 300 squats. And then you have to do another mile run. And you're supposed to do it four time. Um, yeah, and you can break up the pull-ups, push-ups, set up, or pull-ups, push-ups, and squats, however you want, pretty much. So. What's the what's the max time? Like, what's your what's timing? So out? my best time is like in the 35 minute range That's for the two miles and. Yeah, That's so it's probably like an eight-minute mile twice, and then like nineteen minutes for like the work, something something like the that. Work. So, but yeah, I mean, I I don't know if I could do that this coming May, but I guess we'll find out together. Sure. Brandon said he could. Guess we'll find out together because you'll be there doing <laughs> it. With I can't do a pull up, let alone. <laughs> well, there. But I, so, so that's a goal. Now I we need have to. A, and I'm sure is. there's a we lot of people in the comments, which is Lots. somewhat the. The point of you know us being here tonight, or you know the the intent of tonight's talk. Yes, uh, I think there's a lot of people in that same boat. But beyond driven fitness, you can get fit. Oh, 100%. and uh, you know, functionally fit. get get to that. Yeah, get to that level of where you want to be. Yeah, Definitely. we were talking about the sleds and stuff like that. They actually have a, a section of turf over there at Beyond Driven where you That's can cool. do your pushing and your pulling on your sleds. They have a rope that you can climb. They have like the rogue. Like assault style oh, bikes. Assault bikes. Yeah, Fantastic. they have uh, they have uh, the concept two rowing machines, the good ones. So yeah, I mean they have like the real you know functional fitness gear that you're looking for. So I state of the art that. equipment, great staff, great facility. Can't recommend them enough. Always like to say nice stuff about them. So nice. Um, so now, uh, so do we got anything? Yeah. over there. Yeah, let's do ask we have people about the saying hello. How, how, how is our audience? Three hundred and thirty. 3,000 viewers. And wow. Oh, wow. Well, well, everybody's fantastic. being pretty quiet. That Seems Ethernet. Nice. I think they're listening to you. Not. That Ethernet cable really made yeah. a difference. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh uh, I, can, can I introduce you? Yeah. This yeah, is our, this yeah, is our yeah. new friend, uh, Josiah. Whoa. Josiah's not our new friend. He's I mean, been he's, around stream, for, he's, stream. Like, yeah. he's not new to me, but he's new to, to you. Well, um, that's fair. Uh, yeah, so he's going to be helping me out uh, with live stream stuff because... You can't see how much stuff I have, but it, I need a second brain, and he is really good at this stuff. So We um, contractually had to allow you to have a life outside of the firing <laughs> pin, too, so every now and then you can't be here. So, you know. Can't just know, keep him chained to the labor laws. forklift and uh -huh. stuff. You know. <laughs> all right, well, we all learned something new yeah, today, so that's yeah. good. <laughs> So cool. um, why why did we put our gear on? So all of this uh, we put occasion. on so that we could talk to you guys about uh, the tactical games, right? Or the tactical games skirmish. Um, it's one of the things that uh, we've been involved in here for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. um, and we really we really dig it. So I think we got our start doing that in 2020, right? Because um, I went uh, to Pennsylvania and. Um, Mm -hmm. Competed in the first uh, first tactical games event, and I liked it a lot. It was a lot of fun. I had a maybe it was twenty nine. I'm trying to remember back somewhere in there. I'm trying to think of it. time is crazy. Yeah, since the pandemic. Yeah, time is crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, it was that's a certain real. a certain amount of time ago in the past. It was many Pat moons ago. Yeah. For tonight, and so we did we did that, and it was a lot of fun. And then right kind of right away, we decided we wanted to get involved mm -hmm. as like an affiliate. And we wanted to bring it back with us because um, we wanted you guys to potentially get involved and suffer as well. Um, so the skirmish, the tactical games skirmish, is kind of like a gateway drug, if you will, <laughs> to get you guys excited about going to and competing in the bigger tactical games events. Mm -hmm. um, so 
as an affiliate, um, I've been in contact with the Tactical Games proper, and they've kind of changed the program a little bit um, in terms of their level of involvement and the things that they kind of are asking of us and kind of the things that they're giving us in return. So they're going to be helping out a little bit more on the marketing side, yeah. on the programming side. Super cool. And, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more of like a training style of an event. Um, and they're going to be offering a little bit more s support and guidance so that we yeah. know that we're, you know, it's uniform and we're doing the same thing as everybody. Because up until now, I think everybody that does a skirmish kind of does what they want to do. Hmm. And um, it's hard to know that the product is going to be consistent from one place to another. or yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a, it is a unique uh, sport yes. or... Uh, like division of our industry, you know, however you want to put it. Uh, there's countless, you know, there's USPSA, there's IDPA, there's Cowboy Action, there's this, there's Steel Challenge, there's all sorts of things. Uh, and Tactical Games is its own, you know, niche. And it has its own uh, quirks and set of rules and just things that make it unique. Correct. Uh, I definitely think this is one of the more physically uh, geared um disciplines if you will yeah uh, I think if you're going to compete and want to do well obviously you have to be in the best shape to do tactical games versus USPSA or any of the others not like being it's in more shape important will I help say. you in all yeah, of yeah. those things obviously but yeah this is the most like you're not going to run a mile in a USPSA match nope. you might have to move between stages some right. and whatever but like yeah like a tactical game stage might be going a three mile run. And there's targets interspersed, or at the end, or at the beginning, or whatever. So, so it, is yeah. a, it is a very uh, physically demanding sport, which is good. There's a lot of people that are looking for that. I think it's the most, I don't want to say like realistic for what we buy these sorts of things for, but there are certainly, you know, there's a subset of gun owners um, that want to be prepared for any scenario that want to be able to take care of their families, that want to be able to take care of their communities. Sure. And it's a, it's a prime, you know, uh, if you think of the, the foundational reasons for the Second Amendment, you know, right. militia of the people, things like that. Uh, so there's certainly a subset of people that want to train and want to, you know, maybe you're a veteran and you want to stay, you know, at that level that you were and you, you, you know, I want to say you enjoyed those current. things, you got paid for them. Yeah, I stay current, all those things. So uh, I think the Tactical Games is the best way to express that, to kind of use use your kit. I, I don't want to say LARP, but that's what a lot of people... I think, it know, is, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's honestly, not a four-letter word. I mean, it is a four-letter word, but it's not a derogatory term like some people would use. I, I say LARPing to describe... Like Honestly, like I'm not... When I go out and I put my gear on, right? I'm not doing it for any professional no. reason. Um, I don't have any like specific thing that I'm trying to be prepared right. for any specific There's no event, event coming that yeah, right, yeah, yeah. that I that yeah. I think I need to be prepared for, yeah. right? And yeah. Mitch, like you're just a regular civilian dude, right? But you've sure. competed in a couple of skirmishes at this point. Mm -hmm. And um so I'll throw it to you for a minute because I want to get you involved in this conversation. So like as somebody who is, you know, obviously been in the gun world for a little while, and you like to shoot. Like when? Did, first of all, how long have you been shooting? Like twenty odd, thirty odd years, something like that. Since I was young. Oh, um, so yeah, a long since time, I was young, but not not AR. Just been going out with my grandfather when I was a, a kid hunting. Sure, fifteen um, years ago. Fifteen years right. ago. All right, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, and then just shooting with my friends as as I got older. Um, you know, and and obviously some people go their own different ways always like to shoot but there has to be a reason behind it in some right. cases like when you go out and train you go out and train but here's something i want to dispel at least get some people really amped up regardless of your body type your body, right. regardless mm -hmm. of your current training level we've seen plenty of people go out there from being really athletic really skinny older guys older girls mm -hmm. uh getting out enjoying it and just doing the activity because at the end of the day we talk about functional fit when you're exercising right Correct. You need to know how your equipment works in case you need to use it in a situation. Sure. You need to know how your equipment works, whether it be cold sure. or hot, how your how your gear feels on. Let's say you're running in it. Let's say you, you now know how to sling your gun accordingly and actually access your gun, whether it be your sidearm or your primary rifle. Correct. These events are fantastic for you to get out and test your gear, 
regardless of your physical conditioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then too, if you're like me, it identifies areas in your physical conditioning that you were deficient in and now you know where you need yeah. to work. Yep. Correct. Because let's let's say this were to happen. I don't think it, it would happen, but in case it were, let's say you're called upon by your community. Are you going to be an asset or are you going to be a liability? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. quite frankly, I don't want to be a liability. I want to be able to work my gear. And you said it too a uh, hundred times. Um, ounces equal pounds and pounds equal pain. We, we set up our guns a certain way right. because we love the look of it. Right. But then when you get out in real practical application, how <laughs> how <laughs> so functional stupid. is that gun? Yeah. Are you going to be able to carry that for a long distance? No. How does that gun feel bouncing on your shoulders as you're, as you're moving? Correct. How does it, and everybody, too, it's a great opportunity to get out and not just be static shooting. Right. Like mm-hmm. Just drawing and mm-hmm. shooting, shooting, shooting. That's fun. But what's it like now that you've had movement into it? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, when, so many great. What's it like now that you've got a squad of your peers watching you? You know, and there's a shot timer. Yeah. And now, yeah, when you put people on time, all yep. all sorts of weird stuff starts oh, to happen. It's right? very fun. Very fun. And yeah, for sure. I have noticed the the few that we've hosted here, and you know, the after action reports that I've heard from the other ones that you've hosted. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on like our buddy Dwayne. I don't know if he's watching right now. But Most Dwayne, he is. Dwayne is is very similar uh, in body type to me. You know, we're former like collegiate athletes. That's his that's his favorite line. Right. Uh, we're not in. You know, we're we're no Pat. You but know, he does we well. don't. We don't. But yeah, and he, he has really the well. most fun. He probably has the most fun out of anybody there. He knows he's not going to win. He's there to try out his stuff, to have a good time. His attitude is always Amazing. way up here. Amazing. Yeah. He's and learning. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. He's yeah. learning. You're he's learning. there to, you know, meet some new people mm-hmm. potentially mm-hmm. Or, or see his old, see his friends from yeah. the, yep. you know, because it's a community thing at the end of the day as well, right? So, it is. It yeah, is. no, I would yeah, say don't, that. Don't be, uh, sorry, as, oh, right. as the big guy, like, don't be discouraged if you're not able to do uh, all the pull-ups and all this and all that. Like, So, yeah, are, let's talk about divisions for yeah. a minute, right? Because, yeah. like. There, everybody's going to feel like, you know, where do I get going, right? Like, what's what's going to be the right thing for me? So there is a division um, called the light division, right? And in the light division, you don't have to put on all of your stuff. Now, we'll talk about the gear itself in a minute because, Mitch, you've got uh, a very uh, specific, uh, the 511 Tac Tech uh, play carrier that's designed specifically for, like, movement and being functional right. and, and stretching and all of that kind of stuff. Brandon's got the really nice cry precision, like the jumpable plate carrier, the like special operations, like something that's like, yeah, yeah, because just in case you never know if you got to jump into a place, like your truck, you got to jump in there right quick, (laughs) yeah, you'd be able to jump right in, (laughs) jump right back out again, you know what I'm saying? But no, so, um, and then you know, I just got like a regular, like civilian, um, op gear plate carrier, you know, nothing special or whatever, but point being. There's, they're a little bit different, right? And we all had a different kind of reason that we selected them. Um, if you want to compete in this sort of event, you don't necessarily need to have a plate carrier, right? So you don't necessarily need to know the equipment that you need right out, right out of the gate as far as plate carriers are concerned. Um, if that's a, you know, a barrier to entry, let's say, or you're worried about whether or not you could actually move in it because it's going to be some additional weight. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a division for that. We have the intermediate division, which is more geared towards people who have a you know an established level of physical fitness, let's say, mm-hmm. and that know that they can shoot um, in general, and they just want to go out and, and you know kind of get their feet wet, so to speak. There's the elite division for you guys that really want to go out and get after it. Heavy, heavy weights mm-hmm. in the elite division, um, very stringent accuracy standards. And the guys are absolute beasts. Um, I compete in the tactical division, which we're not doing a tactical division for our skirmish. We just didn't want to get too in the weeds with it. Um, Basically, in the big games, the difference between a tactical and an intermediate event would be in the intermediate, you can take apart the weights and stuff like that. Um, like if we had a sandbag, let's say that weighed 200 pounds, you could break that sandbag down into individual components and move it that way. Sure. But if you're in the tactical or the elite division, you have to move it as like a unit, right? Gotcha. Um, everybody's allowed to shoot with dots now. That's cool. Everybody's allowed to shoot with compensated handguns now. 
Um, so they've opened it up in that That's regard. Cool. No, I'm sorry. Except the elite division can't shoot with dots still. Okay. But if you're in the tactical or the elite division, you have to move it as like a unit, right? Gotcha. Um, everybody's allowed to shoot with dots now. That's cool. Everybody's allowed to shoot with compensated handguns now. Um, so they've opened it up in that That's regard. Cool. No, I'm sorry. Except the elite division can't shoot with dots still. Hmm, so that's everybody except yeah, yeah. yeah, and they put it to a vote. That's cool. As well, and the elite athletes Just themselves were like, yeah, "No, yeah. we like don't it. want we don't want dots." That is cool. I, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But that does make it more accessible for everybody else in all the other divisions, being able Correct. to kind of run whatever. Yeah. You know, because there's like you said, there's enough. Not that you need. The plate carrier and all this, you know, but even just even just showing up to one of these events is a lot. It's an undertaking uh, financially. Yeah, say, it's a commit. Know. It's definitely a commitment, right? Yeah. And you're gonna have to get outside of your comfort zone. I think for the most part. Oh wow, we're Thank gonna you. have to get outside of our comfort zone, you know, to get just out there and be, um, you know, in the mix with all of those people in a new environment uh, to learn something new. But I think that's yeah. important. And we've we've all you know been there at some point in time, gone someplace new to try a new thing, right? So this oh, yeah. is this is just like that. Ty, do you have the the link to put up there where people can go check it out, sign up for our next event? Because the next event is coming up soon. It's the twenty fifth of March, Ty. I sh I didn't give you the link for yeah, the show. That's my bad. That's no. okay. I get it. We'll post it in the comments down below. Um, we're having connection issues. Yeah, we're having big time connection issues. I see that. Yeah, we that were, is we wild were, stuff. That number on the right, Mitch, it's going up to like eighty eight percent, eighty nine percent. Usually, that is to say, it like it usually stays at like three percent, four percent. Oh, I don't know what it actually means. That's not audience participation. No, nope. I wish it was. Oh boy, that would be cool. But yeah. I think it, once it gets to 100, we all die. No, I don't know. It's at 99. Oh. We get trapped in the internet again. Does it go over 100? That's crazy. What does that even mean? No, I don't know if there is over 100. What is that labeled, Ty? What does it's it say? It's 100% of awesome. Cash. Cash. Oh, cool. I'm looking at like the Facebook. Oh, sure. Cool. Stuff and it, it, it's pretty dead. It's, I bet. It sounds so stupid. We need to get Spectrum or whoever in here whenever it rains. Like, I don't know if it's like our junction box, like where they brought the line in or whatever. But like, <coughs> is this is this when it freezes up? Mm -hmm. we well, no. Usually we get into a, like an hour. Yeah, is when, and it's only been what fifteen minutes. Twenty two. Yeah, so like um, we still have audio running because one day I'm gonna upload all these to Podbean. Sure. So we're still good. On so that. we're still right. uh, no, we're, we're yeah, we're still getting, we're still gonna get some content out of this, so, so that's good. Looks like we're coming out of it. Okay, so cool. stupid. I got the Ethernet cable and everything. See how it goes. But so yeah, uh, where I'm sorry, where were we at? So that was a, kind of the division Divisions, breakdown: yeah. is your light, your intermediate, your tactical, your elite. There is a masters division for guys that are over 40. We have a masters 40 plus. There are women's divisions as well. We just have a, a regular women's division, and then we have a women's 40 plus uh, for now, and then we'll, the rest will kind of expand out as needed. And it's amazing, the interest from women that I've spoken to. So mm -hmm. obviously I'm, I'm working with Pat in essence of, I want to get this out. It's such a great program, mm -hmm. great camaraderie, mm -hmm. a lot of similar interests in there. You're meeting people from across the state. Uh, but I've been, I've been speaking to a lot of different women about this lately. Yes. And they have high interest in getting out. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm pretty shocked at the volume of them that want to get out. My wife being one of them, a couple of our friends we go to the gym with, uh, they're in and they're telling their friends, everybody is getting excited for this next opportunity. It's very interesting because I, I tend to agree. Like I see women as like the next big market for mm -hmm. this. I mean, shooting sports generally, we know it, but I see women being the next big participants in this sport. And I'm, I like it. I think it's awesome because um, it is a good test of not only the gear, but also of you know your physical fitness and your ability to actually apply the skills when you when you most need them right which is when you're under pressure so whether it's time pressure whether it's physical duress whether it's your peers watching you that performance anxiety knowing you only get one opportunity to do your best right there's all these factors that kind of like when you put somebody in that competition setting it just yeah. you can either do it or you can't, mm -hmm. and you learn pretty quick, um, and then, you know, some people be, get better at it, and some people just give it up, right. so it's kind of interesting to see how people respond to that. 
Ty, do we have any um, questions, comments, concerns, pitches, gripes, complaints? Yeah, we do have a question. Mostly complaints. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, that do better. Uh, I have a question from Mark asking, um, hold on, let me, let me see if this works. Is it one of the marks, one of the many Whoa. marks that we know? Oh, now there's two, well. Sorry. There were two of us. There's an option, I don't know. Like, I want to learn how Whoa, to Whoa, now there, look at this. Oh, that's cool. There, there we go. go. What, what, uh, oh, uh, two ties. We had two Joe okay. So there is a question from Mark. Okay. Um, he's asking, uh, will we be ever holding any room breaching, clearing, or CQB type courses? Uh, the state of Hokel stand, Hokel stand makes it pretty tough to do anything with substance. Um, I mean, honestly, we could do, that would be, open enrollment <laughs> stuff for something like that is kind of tough to advertise, because the people that it's going to attract, I don't know, it's just, there's, I, I would say there's multi, multiple reasons. There's many facets that, to that, that make question. It tough. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, number one, not that Pat doesn't know things about that, or not that we don't have people that know stuff. Uh, but I don't know. It's not like you have a certificate from the army that was like, you went to door breacher school and you know how to teach other people how to do it. Like, well, yeah, there's to, really like, no, yeah, there's, I don't know. It's really tough to like validate. I don't know, man. And then like, I'll, I'll just put I it probably out there. Wouldn't like, do it. There's <laughs> probably just wouldn't do it. There's a lot of things that I think a lot of us want to train to do. Cause there's nothing in like, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with having a ski mask in your car. Right. There's nothing inherently wrong with carrying zip ties in your trunk and duct tape. But like sometimes you put all those things together and you know, you got some explaining to do that you don't want to have to do. And I, I feel like we already push that envelope enough. And I'm certainly not going to say that there's no legitimate reason a civilian needs to know that because I don't think such a thing exists. Like mm -hmm. if there's if there's knowledge that exists, then we all like you know, there's not certain tiers of people that like, oh, well, only the elites get to know that or only Correct. the privileged few get to know how to do that thing. Um, but, yeah, it's difficult for us to like, hey, come down to TFP and get door breaching, like, classes. It'd be just, really difficult yeah. for me to, like, justify why I was teaching. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Or, you know, CQB, I guess, is different. That's That's a more, you know, but that isn't involved. That is a... That is the tip of the spear, the most advanced of the advanced type of training that you can do because, I mean, when we do, like Pat said, when you do open enrollment type of classes, to get someone to come out to take like a basic level course as a prereq to take, you know, a course where now you can at least like draw from the holster and then you can take a class about, you know, shooting on the move and shooting from different positions and doing all these things. There's such a buildup. You know, you would legitimately probably have to take 20 to 30 hours of classes to get to where you'd, like, probably feel comfortable doing, like, what you talk about when you're talking about CQB of, like, slicing the pie and, like, you know, I think a lot of people a don't realize, whipping yeah. around and engaging, like, and th like, there's a lot to that. I think a lot of people like, don't realize how much of a workup there really is yeah. to, like, actually doing a shoot house, even with, like blanks or even sure. even with yeah. like yes yeah. with airsoft right like usually you well. would do like um a glass house and you do it with like swat hands and like no guns sure right and then yeah. you do like a glass house maybe with guns right and then you go to a place and mm -hmm. you'd actually like do a single room and then you do like a hallway and then you do like a stairwell right. and then you do like multiple rooms and then there's like this whole process right so you're not gonna no. there's no way to like and then even uh, like not to keep talking about this one topic but like then you go on to like look up project uh what is it project gecko mm -hmm. is one page that I f i'm familiar with yeah the and that's guys. that's a that's like a dude or a bunch of dudes or a, a training company will say and that's all they do is like here's here's a doorway how do we deal with it and they will essentially like go through almost like phd mm -hmm. level like courses of instruction on that for like real operators and stuff and even there are they teaching the right thing there'll, there'll be a million people in the comments being like nope that'll get you killed like nope we did it differently when i was in in, a, in fallujah you know and it's like okay you know even like the best guys in the world they can't teach it right yeah like, yeah no there's yeah there's like dynamic versus deliberate and there's all this stuff with single man versus a team and the so many, so no. Crazy. I'm just not, I'm not even good. There's so many more qualified people to 
do yeah. that. I'm just... It's tough. It's it's very tough. So know that we want to do those types of trainings, but it's just not realistic at, right now. No. Yeah. There's there. I mean, probably the closest you could get would be like going to Sig Academy, right? Like, but I don't. Even, they don't teach a CQB, do they? Oh, they teach many CQB classes. Do they? Yeah. Are they like open enrollment? Oh, like, yeah. For anybody? Okay. Yeah. The, well, they then. do like. Uh, but you can't just show up and take one of those. I'm sure there's pre. No. Yeah. You right? have to like. You have yeah. to go to many different. That's the, that's where they're really gonna have a. A barrier to entry, mm -hmm. right, is going to be yeah. you're going to have to do like handgun 101, and then you have to do like handgun, you know, sure. the progression, and then uh, even like to go to like Kyle Lamb's like night fighter or sure. whatever or yeah, street fighter pistol class. There's like a, you have to take multiple classes there before you can go to right. Something it's like it's that. involved. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. So um, I never know what's the best view for this. Cool. We'll just keep it at that. Uh, the same person asked, is the Tactical Games individual or a team event? There are multiple different lanes. There there are team events you can go to. Um, I think Panthera right now is the host of the team event. Um, and I think... But I'm there may be a team division in every event at the bigger games now. I don't. There's definitely team events available. I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction, um, but if you go to the TTG page, then they're going to have uh, all the information about the various divisions. And I did. I recently signed up for another event in Ridge uh, at the Ridgeline Training Center in New Hampshire. And if I'm if I'm remembering accurately, they do have a team uh, division there. That's cool. Yeah. That'd be fun. That would. I think that's like a really useful way yeah. to compete, right? Is because um, first of all, you can if you're traveling somewhere like I'm going to New Hampshire. It would be really nice if I had somebody that was going with me <laughs> that wanted that, to yeah. like split the driving yeah. and like maybe. Um, well, as far as like accommodations, I'm going to be set there. Like I get to stay with the fam, so I'm not going to yeah. have to shell out. But for otherwise, a hotel. you know, yeah. usually you gotta have to. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like if I was going to West Virginia or somewhere yeah. Kentucky again or something like that. But, hey, speaking of, for all of you guys out there that are watching, if you would be interested potentially to go to a Tactical Games event at Ridgeline Training Center in New Hampshire in June, I'm going to be headed that way, and I would love to have some company. So, Aww. um yeah, I mean, I can go by myself. I drive to Maine every once sure. in a while. It's a far so, drive, though. It is kind of a long drive. It's kind of a pain in the ass. And honestly, like, I wouldn't mind, like, having somebody that I could kind of, like, hold their hand and, like, sure. help them through their first event, right? So if you're looking to go to your first event, um, or if you just want to come hang, I don't care. Um, yeah. PM me. or Slide. Slide in. That's Slide into his DMs? Message. Oh, Direct message. Direct message, oh, private, DMs. whatever. You know, Slide just right do in. the thing. If you got my phone number, hit me up. <laughs> June 17th and 18th. Correct. That sounds accurate. That's accurate. It's my daughter's birthday weekend. Oh, that sounds accurate. Where can, uh, where can I find it um, so I can post a link? Where can you find what specifically? Is there an event on Facebook that you guys have? Is Probably in the Tactical Games website. Just the, just yeah, just go to the TT... Oh, you're saying uh, the link for my thing? Yeah. Here, I'm, I'm actually going to send it to you, yeah. and you can shoot it to him. Thank you, Mitch. Appreciate it. Yeah, the practice, score, the practice score, it's on practice score. Mitch will send you over the link, and you guys can go check it out. We have 20 slots available um, across yeah. all the divisions, and um, I'm really excited for the, the new format. So let's talk about the new format specifically, because I kind of alluded to it. Sure. Um... So, the way that we've kind of done these in the past is the Tactical Games has a basic format Ty. of a strength-based event, and then a speed-based event, and then a long movement or endurance-based event. And that is usually like the, the programming sure. across yeah. um, all of their... You're kind of free to come up with how you're going to do that, but... 
For the most part, yeah, we've been kind of, and they give us yeah. like some examples of like, sure. hey, these are some things that have been done in the past, and we know like the equipment kind of like various things that we've used as far as tools go. We use sandbags, we use sleds, we use maybe some yokes. Um, we use body weight is a really good one to get people like yeah. broke off mm -hmm. a little bit, um, and so we um, have basically been left kind. Of, I don't want to say to our own devices, but in a sense, we've been kind of coming up with it on our own. So now, the way that Tactical Games wants it to kind of go is we're going to have three specific, like, shooting events. They're going to help us develop some of the programming, and then we're going to have, like, a mini stage that we can put people in, and they can kind of run through it multiple times. So it's more of, like, a teaching mindset as That's opposed cool. to um, a competition-type mindset, right? Because yeah. the idea is... You know, they want us to be able to help the sport grow. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, the, we've definitely seen a lot of growth in the couple of years that I've been competing. And uh, even here in New York, where the gun culture is relatively weak, mm -hmm. we have seen a lot of... In, I mean, we all have friends yeah. that, you know, have gotten involved and then gotten at least one other person involved. And um, so it definitely seems to be spreading, which is... Which is really cool. Definitely seems like something once you do it, you're kind of hooked to. Oh, absolutely. Like, because it is, I mean, for most, a lot of us are spoiled. When, you know, either you come here or like there's guys that go out to Polar Wave or whatever, you know, and LARP around, we'll say. Right. But there's only so many uh, safe spaces, <laughs> safe opportunities to, to do this, especially do, in New like, York. Valuable, you know? yeah. yeah, like actual um, valuable training. And, and right, to try it out and. That is a great way to look at it. Like, yes, it is a competition, but it's it's really it is training. It's a test. You know, it re it really is, and that's that's a it's a it's not a formal like where you're getting taught by an instructor, but it's still just as valuable. Of you know, here's what I think is a presentable kit to use for this scenario, and yeah, it's a test. Does it work or not? You know, it's kind of really like, I guess it's more of a validation of it's training. It's like unguided training or some type. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more validation. like a validation, like you know what I mean, yeah. like, of training. Because, like, to me, like, I have an event coming up in June, and they're going to be putting out information between now and then. And there's going to come a certain point in time. I don't know exactly when that certain point in time is. There's going to come a certain point in time when the stages are going to be available and mm -hmm. up, and you'll be able to, like, review them. Right. I don't know that... In, I, I never know that inform like I don't go yeah. and search that out yeah I find out where I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. and when I'm supposed to be there and when I get there I get the briefing and I ask my questions right and you watch I hope I don't have to go do first yeah, right? like so <laughs> I hope I don't have to go first so I look like a dork right right but I, I don't really get like way down in the weeds about like oh this is the thing and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna yeah I yeah, this there's some styles of competition like USPSA or whatever where there where you you almost have to do that you have to like okay I'm gonna step off on this foot just when we engage these I'm gonna do a reload do that here too. Or like I do USPSA yeah. and it's fun and I like to go yeah. but I'm not a big stage planner there either right because it's not a to me that's it's a game and if I want to be the best at the game then that's what I'm gonna sure, do sure sure right but right now I don't really care about being the best at the game right. I care about going out there and figuring out if given a situation that I don't really fully understand or maybe know every, all the details about, mm -hmm. I can go and like process information sure. and make yeah. sound decisions yeah. and handle my gun safely and physically do whatever I need to accomplish in order to complete the stage. And that's basically what I try to do. So, you know, and I think there's value in that. And mm -hmm. I think there's value in doing it the other way, too. Like, trying to have a very, like, rote plan. Like, hey, I memorized all of this shit. Sure. And now I'm going to go and try to If execute. that's your goal. Yeah. Right. yeah if yeah, that's yeah. the goal and you want to be the best at the game, I don't necessarily care, care about being the best at the right. game. Because I don't think that that's... Right. That's not what I'm in the game for. And tactical games, I mean, the way some of those stages are set up, you could be the best shooter, uh, you could have the best plan, you could have, in theory, the best, you know, you sh you're the number one seed for that that stage, but uh, those stages, man, they'll, sometimes they'll just kick your ass, you know, you nope. can't, 
you can't pick the thing up and get it over your shoulder. Right. Every time yeah. you do, you end up dropping it. If like you take too many penalties, like, yeah, yeah. Like, or just something. Yeah. At the uh, end of the day, the shooting is weighed more heavily. I was going to say, yeah, the it shooting is, is, it is a shooting yeah. competition, yep. ultimately, right? You do have to have the athleticism to do the job, but that's Correct. definitely like the ones that I've seen. Uh, People win or lose on the the, the shooting is Correct. where the, was where the match is actually determined. Like as long if you can meet that barrier, if you can do the job, okay, everybody can do the job. Then yeah, the shooting is and it's strict. It's especially I remember in, in the, Pennsylvania the guy the that won the division. intermediate division, yeah. the guy that won the intermediate. I like he must have outshot everybody because he never really looked like he was like giving his. Hmm. Like um, an all-out effort to any of the physical shit, yeah. Because he was just like, "Hey, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna shoot sure. my very best." Yeah, and Let's the physical shit, like, yeah, I'm gonna do like he was trying not to gas himself out. Sure, like as long as you right. don't time out, right. right? Like, yeah. And I think it was kind of his first event as well, and he mm. ended up winning the intermediate division. He was wow. an awesome shooter. Yeah. He was physically fit enough because he beat me, and. Like all the Which the whole other things. field, Pat's like, you know, he wasn't that fit enough. Fucking, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, but like that, it wasn't about that though. Sure. Is, is like right. the point is yeah, like yeah. he didn't I know have what you mean, to though. go out there yeah. and like be the most physically fit dude there in order to to win and be successful. And at our skirmishes, it's kind of the same way. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to be like, you know, a stud to come out there and perform well. You just have to go out there and and you know, know how to run your gun. And be physically fit enough, I guess. What I think is a, and probably should go to a question, but what I think is good is adjusting your kit. Mm -hmm. How many times have you adjusted your kit since you started training? How many times have you adjusted your rifle setup, your different optics? The gun, more, lengths, yeah, the gun more than it. anything. Yeah. It's it's really been for me. The journey has been more changing the hand, the rifle because the the kit like. I pretty much know what I want to do as far mm -hmm. as like how my my gear wants to be set up. I just want to run something that's like going to give me as much coverage as I need. That's going to be low profile, but that's going to be scalable so that I have as many mag pouches as I need, and I can put more stuff on if I need it. Right? Because ultimately, like I want to be as small as possible, but I also like to have the ability to add little pouches and, and danglers and stuff like that, right? Because you never know what other things that you might need. So that's that's you, right, on your on your first one, or at least where you're set up and your history that you have, but let's say we're somebody new. Yeah, so if you it's don't awesome. know and you buy a gear, you buy some gear. You buy your gear, you know it works, you test it out, uh, even down to ear pro. So I remember mm -hmm. one of the events I did, and we you had us doing burpees in the mud. Yeah. And I went down to do one, and my ear pro came off. Correct. Yeah. It slid right forward. I was sweating. My ears were sweaty. Sure. Just came right down on me, and I'm like, all right, I, I know what I need to change. Or let's say we're operating on the VTAC or, or one of the other more compromised positions while you're shooting. Right, right. You know exactly your positions, how stuff meets up, mm -hmm. whether or not your eye pro is right, your ear pro is right, mm -hmm. whether or not you like your brace or you want to go to a longer length and have a stock. Um, you know what is going to fit best for you. And again... I find a different value in these games as practical application. I know how I work, and I know what I need to change. I mean, after the first event, I went home and changed like five separate things on my rifle. Sure, correct. From yeah. barrel length, from compensator to flash hider, uh, to a different optic, a magnifier. I went to a longer length barrel instead of the shorter length AR pistol. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I changed up everything, and the next round I went out, my rifle game was on point, loved my setup, and... I knew what I needed to change. Two, I changed handguns right. in that second round, and I, I knew which guns now I don't want to run um, in the next round. Yeah, for so, sure. Like like you say, a lot of people are going to find that whatever they initially buy mm -hmm. isn't optimal, right? And they may have to change some stuff up. So one of the cool things about coming out to something like a skirmish is you know, it's not quite as expensive. It's not quite as big of a commitment. Is going to one of the bigger games, so you have an opportunity to come out, see other people and what they're doing, and maybe ask some questions um, to kind of figure out, you know, what are what's the experience level of the person that you're getting your advice from, right? Because right. 
or you know what where is their where is their knowledge base kind of coming from because we've all seen people out there who have their guns set up in one specific way and like yeah this is what works for me and they're they're confident in it sure right up until they're not <laughs> right <laughs> like right up until we find a way to like disrupt that confidence. Well, like, there's a lot of things where, all right, if I go down this journey of I'm going to get a gun, I'm going to get this kit, I'm going to get all this stuff for whatever reason I get it for, because I want to, I get it for self-defense, I get it, you know, because I saw some guy on TV, whatever reason it is, and you make all these decisions that you, you know, you make them through these thought process, you know, on paper, we'll say. You make these decisions and then you do it. When I go to the range, I can practice with this stuff all day, but generally, you know, you're not going to shoot a VTAC drill uh, with that barrier, I mean, if you have property and you, you know, watch the right video, sure you will, but generally speaking, like someone that uses a, a normal shooting range or goes to a normal gun club, you're not going to do those. Be, it's, They're not it's doing not, any positional shooting. Right, like, if you right, come here, right. you're standing, you're shooting static on the firing line. If you're smart, if you're really, like, dialed in, you're going to, like transition of the support sure. side shoulder maybe come over like, to like the barrier maybe right you may try to like yeah. brace off when of you're the, one of the walls and just like I, I guess like humans in general we seek like comfort we know i know if i go to the range and just stand here like normal i can shoot nice tight groups and i can Correct. be happy about yep. that but you're not like pushing yourself ever so that's what i love about these skirmishes and the games and all that kind of stuff is yeah it's pushing you to do shit like oh, i didn't i've never wanted to do burpees in the mud on the range but like God damn it, like everybody else is doing it. Like, all right, like it's fantastic. When in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's actually fantastic. Leaving with your gear all muddy. I still love that picture where I'm I'm looking at my nice guns covered in mud <laughs> in the three days of cleaning that it took it to is get them a all freeing, like once you once you let go and yeah, yeah. just allow one of my allow favorite, it to happen. One yeah. of my favorite pictures of me ever from any of the competitions and shit that I've done is me in Kentucky and I've got like my 13.7 inch gun slung I'm wearing an army combat shirt and a hat like a contractor hat and my head is dead kind of I'm looking kind of at the ground so I'm like fuck <laughs> I'm like so dead and I'm just covered in mud and shit yeah. and like I was miserable in that moment yeah. but I learned a lot from going to that event sure and you know I, I would do it again yeah. it's like hiking a mountain it's not fun necessarily in the moment, but then oh, you're ha very happy once you get to that other side. You get to that su summit, yeah. We got a uh, we got some uh, engagement over there. What's going on? Yeah, um, Mitch. Yes. Walk me through your first time shooting a gun. What was it like? When I was little. Yeah. It was with my grandfather. I want to hear the story. There's not much to it. He, we went out. I had a 22. Nothing big. He was exceptionally strict. So I come from a very strict, like, you do it a specific way. So I don't know if I want to dive too far into that. But it was uh, it was a very strict, you sit down like this, you hold the gun like this, you don't do anything else beyond. Um, How old, you think? I was 11. Yeah? I was 11. Yeah, yeah that was... It's uh, a good age. I, I brought my daughter out. I'd rather talk about my first time with her, but... Um, do that after. Yeah. So I, re I remember that very first time I pulled that trigger. Like that, that sits there, but it was it was my it was my grandfather who was, you know, the one right near me. So, nice. yeah, yeah, I just remember that. So, and I'll I'll venture into my daughter's. So with her first time shooting with me, I brought out my father-in-law. So her grandfather, who's also a uh, Vietnam vet from the Marines, okay. and it was just he was very similar from what I remember uh, to my first time. Like very strict. Everything was well structured. Um, I didn't touch the gun in, until it was set out in front of me and did the same thing with her. But she, I think she had the same enjoyment. She loved a little 22, little lever action 22. Nice. It's addicting. I, I felt like it was a, uh, a better engagement to the body, to the mind, like with that lever action. Cool. Instead of just semi-auto, click, click, click. Sure. You know, like really get her in there. I remember, I remember loading it. Yeah, that brings me back a little because I don't actually think about much of my childhood, to be honest with you. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Pat, Thanks. what? I want to hear your story. First time shooting a gun? Yeah. Uh, sh well, first time shooting anything was a pellet gun. Uh, my dad actually bought me a pellet gun for like my ni eight or ninth birthday, eighth birthday, I think. 
and it was a Re- uh, Remington. It was a Daisy 760 Pump Master. Nice. I still remember the gun. Yep. And um, little like three power scope on there, and we were shooting crab apples at my grandma's house. Nice. And it was awesome. That's fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then the first time that I got to shoot like actual firearms, we shot a 22. And then I got to shoot the thirty or the three fifty seven with some thirty eight loads in it, and then I got to shoot the model twenty nine forty four, and I, that I was like nine years old, and that was pretty scary, um, the model twenty nine, but I remember I hit a paper plate like right in the dead center of the plate nice. on my first round. Nice. But after that, I couldn't hit the plate again because <laughs> the gun was all over the place because yeah. I was just, I was scared of it. So, that's yeah. a lot. For nine, that's a lot. That's a big... Yeah, my first experience shooting handguns Any was kind of a little handgun. bit intimidating. That's, that's young but, for yeah. a handgun. But it was fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And then first time shooting a centerfire rifle uh, was a thirty thirty that my dad got me because um, we were getting ready to go deer hunting. Nice. So, nice. Right before my hunter safety course. Solid. Me? Yeah. I actually have not. I still haven't shot a gun. <laughs> <laughs> still haven't. I. I'm not. It's not really my thing. No. Uh, same as like I always had a BB gun or a pellet gun. Going back, I, I can't remember a time I didn't have some, some type of you know from like the rubber band shooter when you're a little kid with the clothespin sure. uh, I always had you know cowboys and Indians cops and robbers all that kind of stuff and then it had to have been in scouts down at camp uh, Sam Wood we our troop like had a camp out one of our leaders was an instructor for rifle merit badge so yeah I would have been 12 I would have been just right when I had turned 12 for New York State right it's the technically the youngest you're supposed to be able to shoot sure, sure. Uh, but yeah we did like rifle merit badge one weekend and I remember like coming home from that camp out on Sunday and I like begged my dad we went to Sheard's uh, which was a shop here in Bergen yeah, yeah, yeah. it's closed up now but Over we went there like the ne- like Monday like that following Monday when he got home from work I was like dad we gotta go like and I still have it uh, out at their house a Marlin uh, Glenfield uh, like a little bolt action, like a model 22. thirty-five or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, it's just a really you know, it's got a little wood chuck on the on the stock, and yeah. uh, we were just reminiscing in the Discord the other day about how like you know how much prices have come up on this and that, and like I remember getting like a little allowance as a kid, and it was just enough to buy. Uh, Federal used to sell these 500 round, like you know they sell the BBs in those like cartons, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like one of those 550 rounds, and like with tax, it was like I think 20 bucks or something, like 1988 or something like that. Right. And I had like just enough for my stupid little chores as a kid, and that was like my weekly, like I would get that box of ammo and I would burn through it in like two or three hours out back, <laughs> and then I would be like, damn it, I have nothing left. <laughs> but yeah, that was it. And then I, Memories. I can't think of. I feel bad. I can't think of my introduction to like bigger bigger stuff but i know i got into like military surplus i think that's where a lot of guys young guys you know get into having you know the m1 garand and the for sure oh three springfield and stuff like that and yeah yep what about you guys ty let's flip that camera around oh, okay. how'd you get into guns um so yeah i'll let me find myself Sorry, stage, stage, stage right, right? Is that how that works? Um, so I'm, I'm from Bergen. Uh, yeah, my, my grandfather. Uh, some people might know him if they're watching Bruce Cooper. He, he, uh, his, his, his dad owned a gun shop in Rochester way back in the day, uh, right in Greece or off of Lyle, Elvenar Road, and. Um, I guess it's just kind of in my blood. My grandfather took that over when my great grandfather, you know, died. And my first um, time shooting, I used to go out back with him in the village of. I don't know if I should be saying this. But <laughs> in the village of Virgin, and we'd shoot up uh, an old Rochester Air Company uh, pellet gun, which I didn't know anything about guns back then and how cool it was. It was like those nomadic, oh yeah, like yeah. air guns. Um, so every Friday night, I'd go out with my grandparents, middle school and just go shoot pop cans and apples and random stuff. And then um, my uncle took me shooting, I was probably like 14 or 15. That was the first time I shot like an AK. And nice. 
Yeah, I was hooked. That was that was just like that like that exhilarating like holy <laughs> crap, this is awesome. Um, Josiah. Yeah, I mean you know, uh, I mean my dad was uh, in the army, so like he always liked guns. Um, but yeah, the first time I ever shot a gun was one of those little cricket twenty twos or no, the chipmunk, chipmunk. Nice little Woodstock single shot twenty twos. And then after that, it was just friends, you know, different, different ranges, you know, friends' house or whatever, and uh, shot an AR and was surprised by how light that was. I was probably a teenager, you know. It's like, oh, this is an AR-15, and I was like, it was pretty easy, <laughs> you know. But uh, after that, it was just you know, personal interest. I just, nice. I think like those military. Rifles, they have so much hype built around them. I mean, what year was that for you? Probably like 20, thir- 20 like 12? Yeah. 11? It, it could have been like, yeah, 20. It's probably 2010. Same around for me. So guns didn't have like the super bad stigma they had today, but like I remember thinking, like, wow, the AR is such a big, crazy caliber. And the first time shooting an AK and an AR was like, okay, that's it. It's very fun, but not as much as I. The media had made it seem out to, like, had seemed to be. So. Uh, yeah, good old thousands. Yeah, I had a I had a friend who I she came to her friend's house when we were shooting at the house, and I uh, let her shoot a couple of my ARs, and then I was like, "So how was it?" She's like, "That was fun." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the big old scary gun." That's <laughs> <laughs> they don't want you to have. It is always interesting to me people who you know I mean people get into this hobby at every stage of of life, and we certainly here like we don't gatekeep. You know, if, if you're into guns, we like you. Uh, but it is always interesting, people. You know, some of us have been into them. There wasn't a time we weren't into firearms. So there's some of those, like, um, those tropes or just the Hollywood, you know, myths and legends and stuff where, like, we just take it for granted, maybe, that that stuff is crap and, and made up. But then, yeah, you're always sometimes humbled by, uh, you know, a customer who comes in. Uh, it doesn't happen every day, but quite often we'll get. Yeah, there'll be some guy in like his 40s or 50s that just has never been into firearms, just never got into it uh, for whatever reason. They want to be into them now. And uh, yeah, sometimes there's quite a bit of of correction that we have to do. But it is always, uh, you know, like when I like when I was growing up, you'd see something in the movie and it just you just knew it was wrong because it's like, well, like we have that gun, or I just we I know about guns and that's not right. And it is always. Uh, interesting some of the stuff that Hollywood some of our public or you know the perception of the guns you know like the you pull up a gun it just makes a sound right it's like well yeah no there's a lot of weird stuff Glocks don't have a hammer you know yeah Yeah, there's a lot (laughs) of weird stuff out there that you gotta like dispel rumors and myths and whatever else it's always uh, it's always a fun time trying to break down some of those uh, barriers which There's sorry not to interrupt. There's a lot of ones even in the gun. Like we'll hear stuff out of the gun counter that if you actually went to a skirmish, you would squash that myth, you know, or or learn that that is just some guy talking out of his butt at the <laughs> counter. You know, you can tell who hasn't actually run their stuff or tried it or you know. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got anything else over there? Do you have anything else? Oh, I'm sure these guys talk about. Tattoo games all day. Yeah, I mean, realistically, um, all I wanted to kind of get across to you guys as far as TTG goes is um, there's going to be multiple skirmishes uh, this year. Most of them will probably be at Escarpment Arms. Uh, We may try to get out to Attica again. I don't really know at this point. Um, But we want to see you guys there. If you're interested in the skirmish um, and you need more information... um, We'll be putting some links down below so that you guys can uh, reach out to me or you can go to the Tactical Games page and get some information on uh, what the rule sets are, what the equipment requirements are. Um, What was the training event you did? A combine? Are you going to do any of those again? uh, So that's actually, like, really that's kind of like the form that the skirmish is going to kind of start to take. Is It's going to be more of like... A skill development you were saying that. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of like, it's interesting because that was something that, that we kind of came up with here locally. Um, and I don't want to say that, like, I don't want to take credit for anything, but, like, sure. just in general, like, it kind of came up over time 
we had hosted a couple of skirmishes, and we had multiple different um, iterations of the same thing, where it was like, there's some minor safety issue, or some minor infraction, or some minor misunderstanding of, like, rule sets, or the way that things are supposed to be run, or whatever, and it just became like, well, maybe we could make this more of like a training-based thing so we could kind of get sure. out in front of yeah, some yeah. of these things that we're seeing to kind of help people. Because, you know, here in New York State specifically, the the gun culture, and I, I don't like to... I don't like saying this because it always sounds mean, but the gun culture just isn't that strong. And what it's I hard. mean by that yeah. is like, yeah, we've been, we're so used to like just following all of these rules and having all of this stuff forced upon us that people don't know how to train with this stuff and use right. it right. Uh, effectively and efficiently. Um, Cause they're not used to having, you know, they, for example, yeah. most of us don't have detachable magazines. Sure. Right. right. So that becomes a huge problem. Um, or like operating on like what you call like w big boy rules of having you know like you might have a holstered sidearm on you Correct. that's hot on a and we're doing training stuff and you know we're moving around like we're you know uh, things are different at an event like that uh, and like you said in New York there's really not many uh, we'll call them safe spaces where you know yeah you're gonna find a guy. Like, I was never in the military. Like, I don't know how to set one of these up to be... Like, I can throw stuff on a thing because I watched a YouTube video or whatever. But, sure, sure, sure. Uh, unless I go and test this out and see, like, oh, shit, I had my mags turned around the other way. Or whatever. You know, whatever those things are. Right. Uh, you either, like, figure those out on your own or you have, you know, old Sarge here to help you out if you have one of those friends. Uh, or you go to a tactical games skirmish and that's where you test those things out and develop them and make those friends and, and figure out... So that's a really good know, point. Get I've, stuff squared away. Yeah, no, because I've actually had to point that out to people on a few different... So I was at, like, one of the bigger events. Like, it was a two-day event, and there was a guy who was there competing, um, and, you know, I don't know everything, obviously, but I've been around sure. a while. Yeah. And I was like, hey, man, uh, on your mags... I see that you've got this one going this way, and you've got this one going that way, and you've got this one kind of... And it doesn't seem like there's really any plan there. And I was like, so, like, talk me through, when you go through that emergency reload, like, where's your first magazine coming from? And he's like, well, I usually will reach, like, way over... He said, so, he said something that was, like, totally off. Like, sure. just completely 180 degrees from what I... My thought process. Yeah, yeah. And I was like... Check this out. Instead of going as far away from my working hand as I can go to yeah, get yeah. my magazine, yeah. right? I always try and get my next reload on the belt so that when I'm reaching for a magazine, whether it's for my pistol or whether it's for my rifle, I'm always going to the belt first, right? And a lot of people don't realize, like, I might have the placard up here, mm -hmm. but I'm almost I'm never gonna reach for this first. Sure. Because if my if I'm holding my rifle and my rifle goes dry, I want to go here. Because if I'm holding my pistol and my pistol goes dry, I'm gonna go here. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep that the same. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, the yeah. so I always I was telling him like the first magazine should always be closest to the magwell like your next magazine should always go and then when you're done you always pull from here because this is the farthest magazine sure. away work like in order right yeah, so yeah. now this magazine is gone this one comes over this one is still good maybe i have a depleted one that's in my dump pouch because i wear a dump pouch and then i'll take the depleted mag that's in my dump pouch and i'll put it maybe here or maybe even over here, mm -hmm. so now I know, like, hey, this magazine, I can I can use it, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna use it like later. Sure, like that's for future Pat when he's fucked. <laughs> so those are things that like, you know, that's one example of one little thing, but yeah. like, makes a big difference to have a plan, sure. right? In that. and if you'd never thought of those things, you know, if you've never gone down that road or had someone right. lead you through that yeah you'd never know well it's like 
he didn't know, he didn't understand the why. He didn't understand like why do I need to have a plan for how my magazines are set up? Well, because I don't want to have to think about it. Right. Like I just right. I just want it to happen. You got to worry about those targets. I'm right. You know. I'm holding an empty gun. Oh shit! Right. Let's fix that, and right. it just kind of happens. I don't have to worry about it. Right. And not that it's. Uh, I don't think that's what everyone's like intent is, or like in the back of their head, but. You know, some of this, the the thought behind it is if you had to do something, you know, to defend your, your family or your neighborhood or your loved ones or whatever, like, you're doing this in a situation where no one's shooting back at you. So, like, right. yeah, I don't really have to think about it in this situation I because we're just having fun. I'm throwing a weight over my shoulder and I'm running over here and we're laughing. We're having fun with our buddies. But then there are some that would take it to that final evolution of, like, you know, what are we training for? Again, not that there's some, like, event or something specific, but just in a general sense, I want to be prepared that I can do all this stuff while I'm worrying about, like, danger, something. You right. Know, maybe that's an animal. Maybe I'm out hunting. Maybe it's out, you know, it doesn't have to be people. Could be any. Could be anything, yeah. but, like, even just recently we saw where there was the snowstorm in Buffalo and there was sure. a lot of strain on an emergency service. Sure. People were stuck in their homes or, like, mm-hmm. ostensibly their, their cars couldn't move around freely, right? Like... Who wants to be vulnerable in that situation? Right? Yeah. Right? No. So if that had happened for an extended period of time for some reason, right, mm-hmm. people could have potentially been at risk. Um, and so obviously if you have gear like this, right, you have it for a, a reason. Yeah. And it might not be, like, anything imminent, but just in the back of mm-hmm. your mind, if you know that you could find yourself in a situation where nobody's coming to help you, right, then you right. want to have... You want to have more than just gear. You want to have knowledge. Sure. And you want to have some skill. skills. So, what do we go, guys? What else? There. Um, we did have like one last question. Sure. Uh, cool. Let's do that, and then we'll call it. Call some. Get some final words from our guest, and. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, would you guys say a belt is a must? Uh, and obviously, cardio is a must too. But what a belt, about? yeah, a belt is paramount. So you're gonna need because. For, um, well, if you're asking about the a, a competition, then yes, I would say a belt is a must. If you're asking about for real-world application, I would say yes, a belt is also very important there because I don't want to be carrying all of my weight mm-hmm. on my chest, mm-hmm. right? I want to be able to expand my kit out, and I like to be able to put stuff on my hips because it helps me to distribute the load and... Um, you know, it also helps not to restrict my breathing and, and makes me slimmer up top. Sure. Because it sucks to have your gear on and have it confine you. When I was a machine gunner in Iraq, we were forced, we were mandated to wear specific stuff. We had to wear a lot of stuff. We had to wear DAPs, deltoid auxiliary protectors, and um, we had to wear side plates, and we had to wear... You know, our our um, IBA, our interceptor body armor, obviously. But we also had magaz. I also had magazines, and so I'm in my gunner's turret, and I'm very big. Sure. And I'm very well. I'm not big, but I felt big, and my gear was big, and I was confined by all of the gear, hmm. and it felt really cumbersome. So, point being, you don't want to have all of that shit up here if you have to, if you don't have to you want to distribute it as much as you can sure i want to ask a follow up question sure. to that if you could only now this is obviously beyond like a ttg scenario sure if you could only have one belt all kitted out or vest plate carrier all kitted out so the the vest are we talking about a is it going to be just a chest rig, or does it offer ballistic protection? I would say, yeah, you know, it would offer ballistic protection. So it's ballistic, yeah. so it it increases my weight significantly. Or I guess you could go, you could uh, add a third option and go with just a chest rig. The, in that case, I would probably go chest rig. Yeah? I think I would, yeah. because I think that gives me all of the... I'm, I'm big on mobility. Sure. Right? I want to be able sure. to move... Because I feel like people are hard to shoot when they're moving. So if I can stay moving mm-hmm. and I can stay lighter, like I can only cover up so m- much of my vital organs. Sure. 
right? Sure. And realistically, if I get shot in something that's not my vital organs, that shit's gonna suck no matter what. <laughs> sure. You know yeah. what I mean? If I right, don't right. have anything, yeah. if I don't have anything protecting it, right, right, right. But I'll be able to move better if I mm. don't have the ballistic plates, sure. right? So I think for me, a plate care or a, a it just offers me the most rig. flexibility. A yeah, chest yeah. rig just offers me the most because I can even take that off if. God forbid I needed to like ditch it. Sure. Be you know completely gray. Right. If I just had I guess to that like was kind get of the, rid of it. That was kind of my 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 ask, I guess, or my scenario that I'm setting up is like, yeah, what's the most gray man uh, of those? Chest or like if you're trying to be discreet, if you're trying not to <laughs> be eating Capri Suns over the drinking Capri Suns. Uh, if you're just yeah, trying to be and Capri you know, Suns and discreet fruit by the foot, or whatever, be... yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause this I mean, you know, I guess like in order, yeah, like, I would think maybe a belt, only, I don't know, because the belt obviously is going to have a handgun, so that's very, mm -hmm. that's a wep, you know, that's a thing. A, a, a load-bearing vest or just a chest rig of some sort. I mean, yeah, obviously if you see magazines, that's a big clue, but a chest rig, I mean, you know, I see hunters wearing stuff for their gear, for their binos, for their, you know, I got the IFAC over here. It could be it's very, kind of a, it could look yeah. kind of innocuous. Right. And but you a, could put a jacket this over This is top obviously of it. very, like, you know, you're wearing this for one reason. Right. You know, so yeah. yeah. I don't know, that's just you, my... What do you think? I, I'm kind of going a different direction. I'd go for the belt. Okay. Yeah. So, you mentioned it. I have my gun on my side. Mm-hmm. I'm easier to cover up. I mean, I'm bigger up top, so if I put something over there, if I wanted to go gray man and put something over that, right. I'm looking like I'm a 350-pound guy. Looking big, yeah. In this area. Mm -hmm. um, but I had everything I need there from mm -hmm. first aid kit, yeah. extra mags, correct, gun, mm -hmm. any accessories I need on there, yep. tourniquets. Yep. And all there, I mean, you can have it all here. But you can't but I cover could still... it on the belt. See, the thing with the chest rig that I think is beneficial to me is I can also, if I keep my chest rig on... And I have a hoodie, I can I can cover that shit up with a hoodie. And now I still have all of my gear, but I'm still a little True, bit more. Ease of more... access to your extra magazine. Yeah, you've no, got it's, a hoodie, it's covered. restricted. Yeah, no, I'm, you're, I'm still going ease of access. There's all, I, yeah, there's always the correct answer is to have all three. Correct. <laughs> and then no, just absolutely. use them. That is true. There are know? no there are yeah. no solutions, right? There's only trade offs. So yeah. let's talk about training like that too. And I, I I know we're getting close on time, but sure. you and I talked about this training full kit or no kit. And there's two schools in this, right? Mm -hmm. Some guys are like, you're going to be slick. You're going to grab your gear out of your truck and you're going to start running. Yep. You're going to be slick in most situations. Totally appreciate that. Yep. I prefer to train in my full kit because if I can train in 40 extra pounds of weight cool. sure. and still be able to run fast, yeah. mm -hmm. guess how dangerous I'm going to be without that 40 pounds of weight on me. Sure. I'm going to be running even faster. That's always been, yeah, that's always been my kind of mindset there as well is if I put the gear on, now I have one more disruption or one more um, hindrance, one more challenge mm -hmm. that I have to overcome mm -hmm. when I'm moving and when I'm shooting, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm restricted and I have more weight and my gun maybe doesn't fit exactly where it's going to fit right. when I don't have anything on me. And, you know, there's all these excuses. There's all these other things that can come into play, right? But if I don't have the that stuff to... So if I train in that all the time and then I take it off, mm -hmm. well, I'm used to running when I weigh 25 or 30 pounds more. And I'm used to shooting when the gun is not as well connected to my body sure. and I'm used to getting off my long gun and getting to my handgun when there's more stuff in my way, right? So if I can minimize all of that, like train in it first and then strip it all away, it's already pre-programmed in. Like all the stuff that I was doing, now I can just do it more efficiently. Yep. Now, I'm, now I'm just more efficient and more effective. So there's more than one way to skin a cat, but if I had to pick one, like if you were like, Gun to your head. You can o either train in your kit or no kit. I'm gonna train with my kit because okay. if I had to, if I had to train slick and then put my gear on, I'd be in trouble. You're in judgment. But if I had to train with the kit and then take the gear off, that's a net benefit. The stuff can always just drop off really fast, and you can Correct. get going even faster. Um, yeah, I like that. Absolutely. Cool. Any uh, closing thoughts over there? Yeah. Pat, I love you. Okay. Um, but, but wow, I'm just 
is trying wow. to. Wow. There we go. Uh, you're talking about being inconspicuous with your plate carrier. Uh huh. No, I said with my chest rig. Okay, with, with your chest, chest rig, like putting a hoodie in over and stuff. Yeah, but also. I'm just thinking about Batavia in the twenty in like 2020. <laughs> yeah, that uh, wasn't that inconspicuous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got busted. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't that inconspicuous, but I didn't I didn't necessarily like know how that was gonna work at the time. <laughs> that's all I can think. I'm sorry. That's all I can think about when the conversation started. That was a cluster. Yeah, but all, all I can think about is like what would have happened if that had actually gone south. Like, yeah, if things had actually gotten weird there. I guess like, we should put it in context since we're talking about it. Go ahead. Sure. Brian. So when there was a bunch of civil unrest, uh, 2020, right, was going down. Uh, Batavia there was, had an, an there event. There was an event in Batavia. But it was, and their event was was pretty good. All like. peaceful, yeah. But, like, that's in retrospect. Nobody really knew, because I think the intent for all the a lot of the events that happened, like, the organizers wanted them to be peaceful, and then there's people that take advantage and, you know, use it to flip cop cars and stuff and be We, we weren't be sure how way it was going to go. You know, Batavia, I mean... I think for a lot of us is more of a whole, our hometown than say Rochester. We f I feel maybe more connected to Rochester now as an adult, but uh, Batavia is like where I grew up, and that's that's homes. And a lot of us felt that way. And uh, yeah, we hear there's this thing going down, and there's like businesses in Batavia that have like boarded up their windows and stuff. And it's like well, we kind of want to go just to like observe and kind of like Check well, out, like you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna like be a Kyle Rittenhouse. I don't even know if I want to say that word to bring him into this, but like I know like I know the guy that owns that business and I'm not gonna let somebody destroy it. I'll put it that way, right? Like I'm gonna we're just gonna be here and we're gonna do whatever. And uh yeah, so a couple guys go into the crowd and uh Pat was was our gray man and they just gray. they just <laughs> he was made I was like fat, dude I had no so idea funny. how how thick it was just Ceramic it just didn't plates. it yeah. just didn't yeah. And then I brought my drone. I had a drone. So I, like, set the drone up. I'm taking pictures of the crowd from, like, three, 300 feet up probably, like, high up there to get, like, an overview of the crowd just so I could, you know, get a picture of it. And we had our radios and stuff. And Ty's like, bro, get the drone out of here. What the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, why is this a problem? Like, I'm way up here. Well, somebody else had a drone, and they were, like, this high above the crowd. They were, like, right above it. So Ty thinks that's me. And so I'm like, oh, fuck, okay, I'll bring my drone back over here. So it was just a cluster, like, all the way around. It was yeah, like, no, oh the, my goodness. the cops, yeah. like, were... Yo, they were, like, tailing us. They yeah. were following yeah. us all over the place. It was just there's like the protest, and then there's us over at like the tops, like parking lot in Batavia. We're just like watching five or stuff, six, like, of, like yeah. There's well, like, like five or six trucks, and, and, like, meds. and like, we were like we did there to help. We were yeah. Like if things had gotten weird and like people needed help, we would have been there. Like yeah, that was that was our intent was just to be like good citizens to help others. But, but we're yeah, just like just walking around and trying yeah. to see and you know. But it was it was a cool event, and like I thought that all the people Definitely there were lists. like. They, I thought they were very like well-meaning and and like respectful yeah. and like it, it was yeah it was a good event it was yeah it was very community based which we had again we had no idea um, but we knew all the, I knew all the people that were there in the most part like all the yeah. local people that were there yeah and they're like really well-meaning like yeah, good yeah. so it was it was awesome but but we I looked dumb I was there <laughs> <laughs> so whatever Matt, your wife says you're hot oof that's that's I, fantastic oof. I agree. She showed me an amazing video from Savoyas the other day. How they filled the uh, the donuts. Ooh. Leave it there. Ooh. Fantastic. All right, All right, so let's talk one last thing on uh, tactical games. Yeah, for sure. I man. just want to get people out in understanding that the new layout, what we're going to be experiencing, it's not just going out there and going in the mud, destroying all your gear. There's going to be some of that, obviously. But it's going to be more of a training event. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's definitely valid for more people to come out mm -hmm. and even spectate. Yeah, See so spectators, sport. yeah, that's a great point. Spectators are free. We don't charge yeah. anything for people that want to come out and just and just take a look and, and just watch and see what it's kind of all about. One of my first times out, I was I was actually there. I was helping you out. I was coaching. I was, uh, you know, cheering some of the guys on as they were out there through the events. And it was fantastic even at that level. Sure. So not yep. even to be running in it. But to just be around it and talk to the guys afterward and find out what gear they were using and yep. why they were utilizing yep. certain setups on their rifles. And everybody has a different setup because we're all different. We're all shaped differently. Right. We all have different connections with our rifles. So I, I think it's just... Ty, did you, I sent you that link during here. Were you able to put it up? the wrong one. But 
Oh, of course. It's okay. Of course. But you found it. <laughs> but no. Of course you found no. it. No. That wasn't you? No. That wasn't your Instagram? No, okay. No. Oh, now, now, we, now we come down to it. I did send it to the right one. That really looks like him. That looks just like him. That looks just I, like you. That's all dead. I don't use those anymore. Oh. I sent you a message. Oh. On Facebook. Anyways, we'll have so to fine. get it up after the fact. We'll, we'll squirt away. Uh, we'll have other ones in between now and when the next games are. It's March 25th. March the 25th. It's going to be in Lockport. Yep. At Escarpment. Great group of guys. You're going to see people of all levels, like we talked about, mm -hmm. Dwayne and, and everybody else. It doesn't matter. You had a question about cardio. It doesn't matter the cardio. Get out and find your weakness. Find what you need to work on. Yep. Even if it's your first time, everybody knows and understands it. We've all been there on a first run, the second run, beyond. We understand the process. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to be great to get some involvement and get people out and loving it. Yeah, one of the things about the tactical games uh, that I think everybody has said, I've, I'm beating this drum all the time, is the community. Mm -hmm. uh, great the community. community element of things, right? So to me, like, it's awesome when you're out there and you're having a difficult time and the people around you that are ostensibly competing against you are offering you some encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. Cheering you on. And, yeah, cheering you on. And so, like... They um, they put a special emphasis on like cheering the hardest for the last person to compete the event, right? Mm -hmm. Because that last person that's competing that event, like they're still giving it a maximum effort, Absolutely. right? That might be all that yeah. they have to give today, but like um, one of the things that, that they say in the tactical games is. All it takes is all you got, right? So if you go out there and you're willing to put everything that you have into it, then you're going to have the respect and the admiration and the camaraderie of mm -hmm. all of your fellow competitors, right? And that's what it's all about. So we look forward to seeing you guys out there. 25 Absolutely. March, Escarpment Arms. We'll put a link in the uh, comments below. And... Um, Thank you guys for watching the show. Mitch, thanks for coming out, man. Thank good you, Good to gentlemen. see you as Thank always, you so much, my you. friend. Yeah. Brando, good show yeah. as always, my so friend. So much fun. Good job, guys, behind the boards. Dun, dun, and um, thank you for stick. watching. <laughs> dun, dun, dun.